once you realize that dopamine doesn't pull on your brain like a puppet on a string, you can choose to quit porn. It can be completely effortless. Now, I struggled with porn addiction, which doesn't exist. For six years, I was doing no fat for six years. It fucking sucked. Then I read the freedom model and I just chose to quit porn and it's effortless. It's a trivial decision, but a giant prerequisite for this, a thing that you have to understand before it can be effortless, is that dopamine does not pull on your brain. It doesn't tug on your brain like a puppet. It doesn't give you urges. In this video, I'm going to debunk the dopamine myth, show you that it's completely bullshit. I want you to really just genuinely take on board what I'm saying with an open mind and realize, is what this guy is saying legit? Are his arguments actually true or are they false? Come in with this with, a, you know, with an open mind, with a place of genuine curiosity instead of just believing what i say dogmatically question everything as we go through question whether my logic is sound question whether the research i provide is sound don't believe me dogmatically i'm not hamza okay you don't have to believe everything i say just listen to the point and see if it gels with you see if it makes sense the main point that i'm going to argue for here is that urges are not caused by some dopamine circuit in your brain what they call the dopamine circuit in your brain doesn't produce urges it's just a habit loop it's an innocent habit loop so then you're saying okay if it's an innocent habit loop then where do the urges come from? An urge, what we've characterized in the NoFap community as an urge or a compulsion isn't an urge, but it's just a desire in the same way that we desire anything. For example, I desire my hand cream, all right? I've got very dry skin on my palm. And when I see dry skin on my palm, I look at it and I think, fuck, if I don't cure this now, my hand's gonna crack, it's gonna bleed. It's happened before, it fucking sucks. So I, I feel like I need my hand cream in those moments. So similarly, Let's say you go out and you come back and you're feeling a bit shit. You think, oh, I need porn right now. I need to just feel better. Maybe you got rejected at the nightclub and you want to come back and you just want to feel better. Maybe you've just been stressed for some reason. You want to feel better. Maybe it's just that you're bored. Maybe you just feel like you're addicted and that you have to. The truth is, is that your brain isn't producing urges. This dopamine circuit that you think exists, this magical thing, is just an innocent habit loop. The thing is, the habit loop only has oomph behind it. It only has power behind it because of your reasoning in your mind so if i believed one day that this hand cream wasn't actually helping me and all it was doing was making my problem worse as soon as i realized that i wouldn't desire it anymore i wouldn't want it anymore just because i have the habit of putting the hand cream on my hands doesn't compel me to do so what compels me to do so and there's no point in characterizing it as a compulsion because it's not true do i have the urge to put my hand cream on no i want to do it I see the problem, namely my dry skin, and then I think, fuck, where's my hand cream? And I put it on. It's the exact same thing with porn. The habit of using porn doesn't have any oomph behind it, doesn't have any weight behind it from the habit loop itself. The thing that has the weight is you, your beliefs, your reasoning. But here's the thing, here's the giant fuck up. When you believe in the myth, when you believe in the dopamine myth, of porn that becomes a very good reason to use porn let me paint a picture for you you're sat at home and you've got some time and you're in your room and you know that you use porn in these moments you've read loads of neuroscience stuff from andrew huberman and hamza and all of these fancy guys maybe you've read your brain on porn god forbid you now think to yourself my dopamine circuit's going to activate and then when you start to desire porn that little bit you're kind of envisioning the dopamine circuit is activated and it's going to be activated and it's going to be hard and it's going to be difficult going to have to urge surf or i'm going to have to be mindful or i'm going to have to do push-ups i'm going to have to use porn this once and then afterwards i'll improve my mental health and that will make it magically be better when you believe that it's going to be hard when you believe that something's attacking you that belief becomes a very good reason to just use porn why fight so what's really happening is that the brain isn't the problem your reasoning your false the myth that you're holding in your mind is the problem so now that you've got an idea of the point that i'm going to argue for i'm just going to show you some research give you some very compelling arguments that are going to prove this to you because at the moment you're just believing me based on faith and that isn't what i want what I want you to do is to have some genuine curiosity and look at all the information look at read your brain on porn look at hamza's videos look at andrew huberman but take in all the info and see which one is the actual truth here because the truth will out and i know that i'm right i know that i'm right in my own head because i've experienced like effortless quitting porn so i know i'm correct but that isn't the point i want you to know that you're correct from your point of view i don't want you to believe me i don't want you to be like that guy is right all hell fuck that you need to fucking look at the information and just consider which is right which is wrong so without further ado let's get into it i'm going to just present the arguments to you like that so here we go right here on the screen you will see three 
pictures of brains, okay? Now this type of neuroimaging is very, very popular to prove addiction occurs in the brain, to prove that there are irreversible brain changes occurring in the brain, and that causes addiction. Here's the thing, right? As you can see, with the healthy person, they've got these kind of red spotches on their brain. With the meth abuser, these red blotches go away. After they abstain, the red blotches return. This implies the red blotches are under the non-addicted brain. It's a, that's how it's viewed, right? The problem is, is that neuroscience isn't that simple. A key thing to note here is that the person who quit meth, quit meth at the height of their brain changes. Their brain has already been changed by the meth and yet they quit. The point is, how are they able to quit? If the brain is the thing that's responsible, if these circuits are the thing that's responsible, then how was he able to quit when his brain was already changed? If we are a puppet moved like a puppet on a string, then how on earth could he have changed? Do you understand? Like me and you, right? Would have been, you know, abusing PMO for like 10 years, right? So your brain's changed now, like it's changed. Like you've been doing it for 10 years, you've been watching all the fetish bullshit material. Your brain's changed and yet you can quit easily. How was I able to do that? If my brain was changed and the brain is the thing that's producing the urges, then how, when I changed my perspective, was I able to change? And the same is true with loads of other stuff. When you were a kid, you played video games. Maybe you don't play them as much anymore. If your brain was changed, We'd expect the changed brain to cause you to use more, which would change your brain more, which would cause you to use more, which would cause you to use more until you die. And this brain, <laughs> we'd expect this. We'd expect your dick to literally fall off and you to not fucking be able to continue anymore, right? We'd expect a society full of wankers. This isn't what we observe. And this brings me on to point number two. So here we have another figure. This is actually published by Your Brain on Porn on their website. I'm not sure who did the study, but your brain on porn is publishing it, um, we can see that people actually decrease their porn use over time as they get older, naturally. The point is, is that if the brain changes were the thing that was causing PMO, and we have this kind of vicious cycle that the neuroscientists like to bang on about, then we'd expect porn to change the brain, and because our brain has changed, we use porn more, and that changes the brain more, and that changes the brain more, and it goes on this massive cycle, we'd expect it to be like an exponential massive curve upwards. We don't see that. We see people gradually, over time, they think, I'm kind of done with this now, and they just stop using it over time. This implies choice. It implies that over time, people get bored with PMO and they just stop, or maybe their life is just bigger now. They've got more shit to do. They've got more responsibilities. They've got better priorities, and so they just change. People choose, my point is, this is evidence for choice, not for addiction and so now we have the third graph that i want to show you you might think to yourself oh but high streaming internet porn has only been around since like 2007 so of course we're not going to see the older generation being involved with it because they simply wasn't around back then but here i would invite you to look at graph number three here we see a graph where substance use disorder which is highlighted in the kind of turquoise color is going down over time now substances have existed for god knows how many hundreds and thousands of years right we see consistently drug and alcohol use goes down as people get older Older. Drugs have stayed the same, so you can't make the argument that old porn wasn't around in 2007 because we see an equivalence here with, with drugs and alcohol. People similarly just stop using it over time. Again, if the brain changes were the thing that was at fault, we would see people take cocaine. They take cocaine so the brain changes. Because the brain changes, they want to take cocaine more. Because they want to take co cocaine more, and they take co cocaine more, their brain changes more, and it goes on this massive cycle. We don't see that. We see people voluntarily give it up over time. Now, this is contrasted, as you can see, with heart disease and diabetes. These are actual diseases, actual, real pathologies in the body. Addiction isn't a disease. It isn't a pathology in your brain. It's just a habit loop, dude. No difference to the habit of me using my hand cream. No difference to the habit of brushing your teeth. It's just that you, your reasoning, and I'm not blaming you, your reasoning, the myths that you've been misled by, right? You've been misled by the NoFap community and by neuroscientists, people in authority, they've made this false argument. And when you see things differently, when your perspective changes, when you drop this myth, and when you choose to use porn, not use porn anymore, it will be easy, it's been easy for me, it'll be easy for you too. As we can see, heart disease, diabetes, they go up over time. Why? Because that's an actual cycle, that's an actual disease, whereas substance use disorder, bullshit term, porn addiction, bullshit term, urges, bullshit term, all of that stuff is going down over time because there is no addiction, there are no urges, there are no brain, the brain changes that we observe are not responsible for addiction, therefore it goes down. So you're probably thinking now, okay, so if I don't believe in the dopamine myth as a kind of tactic, that's the tactic I'm going to use to beat addiction. No, you misunderstand me. Addiction doesn't exist. So you can't fix that which doesn't exist. If my shoe doesn't exist, can I fix my shoe? No, it doesn't exist. This isn't a tactic to get over addiction. This is a complete reframing where addiction, no, it doesn't. Because addiction doesn't exist, you can't fight it. You can't win against it. 
you can't fix it. But what you can do is just make a different choice. Once you realize, hang on, there's nothing pulling me. Let's be real, we have fucking free will, right? We can do whatever we want, look. There is no dopamine pulling and tugging on your brain like that. There's no, like the habit loop circuit is, it's driven by reason fundamentally. It's not driven by bullshit dopamine. Another thing that the dopamine myth does is once you believe in it, it acts as a distraction. So the real reasons why you watch porn are probably because it feels good. I believe I need it to be happy. I believe I need it for emotional relief. I believe I need it to cure boredom. I need it because I don't have a girlfriend. I need it because of addiction. There are lots of reasons why people do loads of things, right? People drink tea for many reasons. People drink tea to socialize. People drink tea because it's warm on a cold day. People drink tea because it's sweet. People drink herbal tea because it helps them with their immune system. There are lots of reasons for doing anything, anything. And what's important is just like anything. It's not an addiction. It's just an activity. It has no addictive quality to it. The quality of addictiveness doesn't exist in the substances. It's our relationship with it that becomes problematic over time relative to what we perceive to be problematic. If I run marathons every day, is that an addiction to marathons? Is there anything addictive about marathons? No, I just see massive reason into running marathons and I believe I need to. So the point is, is that when you stop believing in this dopamine stuff, when you stop believing in this addiction stuff, the real reasons as to why you PMO, it starts to become a bit more real. You start, you sort of like, okay, if I'm not addicted, porn addiction is just like any other choice. Why am I doing it? And then you think to yourself, okay, I'm doing it because it feels good. And all, all those other reasons I just listed. And now you're in a position where you can just re-reason and reevaluate. Do I need to keep doing this? Do I want to keep doing this? It's the same thing as anything else. When I joined university, I was hyped to study physics, right? I did physics at uni. I got to the end of my first year and I, I, put, I took on philosophy as well. So I did physics and philosophy. In my second year and third year of uni, I kind of fell out with the math stuff. I didn't really enjoy the maths anymore, but I really enjoyed the philosophy. But then my focus shifted more towards philosophy. This was a natural change over time. I re-reasoned differently with my business that I started a year and a half ago. I really wanted to do it. Now, I don't want to do that anymore. Now, I want to do something that's more meaningful, helping you guys quit PMO and spreading the truth. So people, people's reasons for doing stuff changes over time. When you were 10 years old, when you were 11 years old however old you are when you first started PMOing at that point in time it was probably it's exciting it's edgy it's new it's you don't know what vagina looks like you don't know what bouncing titties look like and you're like fuck this is amazing is it the same anymore when you stop believing in addiction when you stop believing in dopamine it becomes a bit more clear okay do I really give a shit anymore I'm a grown ass man now maybe it's time to move on maybe I want to move on maybe I want new things in my life do I really even give a fuck is this thing that I've given a fuck about for so long even that important it becomes like that it becomes like any other decision like choosing what you want to do at degree level like choosing what you want what kind of foods you want to eat what kind of life you want to live where you want to live what you want to do with your time it's just any other decision that we make on a daily basis that's that's why this isn't a tactic to overcome addiction this is a deprogramming so that you can get back to your decision making we're hoping that's making a lot of sense so let's do a quick summary now the dopamine circuits are innocent habit loops they have no oomph behind them without our reason okay? our reason is why we do them people blame these dopamine circuits as mind controlling when in reality the reason and the belief in these dopamine circuits being mind controlling gives people good reason to continue doing it in the same way that my dry hands are giving me good reason to use this hand cream urges aren't urges they're genuine reasons why we see value in things. One of the reasons could be, oh, I can't stop. Oh, it's addictive. Oh, it's a craving. One of the reasons could be the pleasure. One of the reasons could be it's educational. It relieves stress, whatever. We're free to reevaluate these reasons once we stop viewing ourselves as addicted, as pulled by our brain. If these brain changes, if these habit loops were legitimately causing urges, then we would expect basically everyone to use PMO uncontrollably because we all have the same brain. Drugs, alcohol, substances, PMO, masturbation, it's all affecting our brain. So why are we all not addicted? Because addiction doesn't exist. The habit loops are an innocent habit loop. It's just the reasons that we give, give them that oomph. And those, re those reasons come from us. So ultimately we're in control. The graphs that I showed illustrate this beautifully. People who quit meth quit at the height of their brain changes we would this would not be possible if that theory was correct we see that substance use disorder goes down over time and we see that porn use goes down over time we would not expect this if the brain changes were the thing that was responsible so if you want my source material i'm just a talking head on a screen i'm a young guy look in the description i've got the free book 
the freedom model that's where i got basically everything that i'm talking to you about here and i've also got the other books that i've read so you can read that all from the horse's mouth you don't have to listen to me if you don't want to please like this video for the algorithm so that we can spread the truth and help out more guys and subscribe if you haven't already because i'm gonna be uploading a lot more i really want to fucking tackle this shit because i don't see anyone on the internet talking about it at the moment this info really needs to get out there you guys are getting in contact with me on telegram and in the comments telling you telling me oh i'm free now and it's just great i, I love seeing this shit do something here you know the truth is there the info is there we can free like loads of people so fucking share this video with in all your discord groups or whatever let's fucking do this why what's stopping us from helping fucking people there's no one stopping us create a channel of your own if you want you know get, help me out here but you don't have to as well if you want to just quit porn and then unsubscribe and leave perfect it's the ideal scenario is you know just solve this problem please solve this problem for yourself all right that's the key solve the problem then share the vid that's it dopamine circuits load of bollocks that's it